He represents Sweden. The country is also known as the, the North Korea of Scandinavia. Um, but you, our next speaker is not a typical Swede. He is the second Mohammed cartoonist today, Lars Wilks, um, who has lived under police protection since 2010. And um, he will speak about um, freedom of speech in Sweden, from freedom of speech to self-censorship and silence a Swedish tiger. Please welcome Lars Wilks. Um, yes, it's, um, it's quite a big subject. I think my lecture will um, take about one and a half hour, <laughs> so um, it would be a long run here. But um, I have to shorten it, or you have to just uh, participate in a part of it, because it's a complicated matter. My point of view from where I stand is the art. I mean, I, especially covering what happens with the art, because the art is a transitional a game where you actually uh, challenge and provoke. That's the, uh, that's the main idea why we have art. And uh, of course, in a climate where you have limitations, there will certainly be problems. Um, but uh, it's not so often you have cases. Actually, I just will go back to 1967 in Sweden, when there was a Swedish artist, Karl Johan de Jär, he had an exhibition in a gallery in Stockholm and had a, made a, um, a graphic print which said, refuse to do your military duty, uh, defame the Swedish flag. And uh, he was uh, taken to court for that and lost uh, because uh, it was a matter of instigation of rebellion. And I mean, the authorities could imagine that um, People could see his text in the gallery and then start to leave the army. And of course, uh, the Swedish flag was uh, a holy thing at that time. On the other hand, when you look at art history today, um, this uh, print is always, always may, um, be produced in the um, hist Swedish histories of art. And the uh, air is a famous artist, and this is seen as an excellent case of how art should behave. And um, defaming the Swedish flag is no problem today. I mean, the law has changed, and uh, one has to take that in consideration when you deal with art, that uh, there are more layers to things. And, and that's one thing that does wor worry me, and that is not only due to art, the art situation, and that is uh, um, the idea that what you see is actually what you see. But as soon as you open the, um, the art institution, the first thing is that this will be complicated. Because when you make an exhibition, you start the mechanism of art. And um, a straightforward art that can be understood. And then you say, it is about this, and uh, this is the idea, and that is the outcome. Here is everything. Um, is never a good artwork. It is that you have uh, the, the problem with interpretation. How do we understand this thing? What does it mean? And this mechanism always starts when you have art, and that's the very idea of this. Now, this is very irritating for, um, for a situation as we have in Sweden, because if uh, p things are brought forward and people are offended by them, and um, the art artists then say that, uh, well, it's actually more complicated. Um, then they can go back to them. But uh, people look upon it like this, and you should understand that uh, um, this is a, a straightforward opinion coming from what they see, and, uh, and, and therefore it's, um, it's, not, it's not acceptable that there is another layer which actually confronts the first. And, and this is actually also the definition of satire. You say one thing and mean another. And, and uh, in Sweden, that has become problematic, because if you want to make a satire, you have to be so clear, so people understand that it's actually not a satire, but it's saying the thing it should say. 
but I mean, in art, it will become a kind of disaster. Um, that means also that when we have artists, they should not be the good guys. They should really be the bad guys. Because they should actually do things which uh, the society dislike. Um, it is, that's the very point. I mean, if you have a transgression in art, uh, then that is what you have to deal with. You look upon things and you see that we have a convention here. People are thinking like this over and over again. We have the repetition of ideas. And so this is a balloon. <laughs> and then you take the little needle as an artist. <laughs> so uh, that's the job of the bad guys. Um, if you look upon art today, and I've been following um, very closely uh, the de development in art and uh, what is uh, going on in the art world is we say we have international contemporary art. International contemporary art is global. Everyone is welcome in the global international contemporary art. If you follow the rules. If you do not follow the rules, you are not welcome. That's simple. So what do they do in the international contemporary art? They deal with what we call social critique. Social critique. That means that you are very, very polit political in, in a sense. And um, uh, there are certain ideas about what an artist actually should do. I mean, it should be, um, it should be an alternative to politics, uh, making things more, yeah, more interesting than politics itself. But actually, you have the same kind of agenda as the official politics. Uh, you have to take responsibility for the world's problems today. And um, then you kind of repeat these things which we all the time deal with. It's, um, it's a kind of demonstration of political correctness when you look at uh, radical, international, contemporary art doing social critique. And uh, no one is offended. If it could be that something uh, was uh, offensive in an art, art exhibition, it will be removed, because there's a curator who actually takes care of that no one would, should, would be offended, um, and, and so forth. So um, actually what we see here is the artist, they have become the good guys. And um, that is a kind of problem. And I mean, I, 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 I'm standing here as a bad guy. And um, if you... Um, if I um, go back to my situation and my experience, which began in 2007 by, um, by this now rather famous or infamous uh, uh, roundabout dog, that was a very small comment actually. Uh, it was a follow up uh, of what uh, Kurt has been working with, and uh, the reception of the, um, the uh, Danish um, uh, drawings in, um, in, in uh, Sweden and, and how the art world in Sweden actually reacted. I made this small comment, and that, that caused a lot of problems. Um, and um, that's why I have bodyguards today. Um, but the, the, the thing here is that uh, um, I found out that, in, I mean, in the beginning, when these things happened, it was still possible to make a, um, a, a print. I mean, you could, you could publish my drawing in Swedish newspaper in the beginning. Uh, but then it, that stopped. And uh, what I found, because I had not been involved in question about uh, Islam or Muslims or things like that. I mean, I had another perspective. I was just curious about what was going on and how, how people reacted. And uh, I was thinking about artistic freedom. I mean, uh, all gates open. You could read that everywhere. In art, everything is open. There is nothing more to say. Everything has been said. There is nothing more to provoke, and uh, that was, of course, uh, not the case, which I found out. And once you have done the wrong thing, uh, you become a, a marginal fellow. And um, this still go, still go on, you know. <clears throat> I can just take an example. This autumn, uh, which is still going on, I was invited for four lectures and arrangements. And, um, well, it seems... Fairly enough, uh, fair enough, and, and um, um, yeah, everything was settled, time, date, and I have been corresponding with those who invited me, 
And um, then, after some weeks, I suddenly got the message that we were sorry, but we have to cancel the, um, the lecture. Um, and um, what the reason actually was, was very unsure, but it was someone in the uh, system there that had reacted, order coming from above, saying that this is maybe not so good, it is the wrong signal. If you invite uh, Mr. Wilkes, we send the wrong signals. We have to take in consideration that we have many, you know, there's many people here, and some of these people would be offended just by his being there. In, in, in several of these cases, I was going to talk about things that was very neutral. I mean, they, they, I'm working as an art historian, and uh, I, I have also other projects. So, I mean, uh, it was not only about uh, matters that could be sensitive, but actually... Um, um, <clears throat> played a, a, another another role, and, and that is the the part of the the thing that uh, we have. We can say the the uh, idea of censorship that if uh, someone wants to um, come with a criticism, the problem is where to uh, publish it, because you have then um, if you have publications, you have right publications which are right and publications which are wrong. And if you have something to say which is um, controversial, then you have to publish it in a wrong publication. And then the people can point out and say, look there, they have to, it's coming from the wrong side, so we don't have to, don't have to depend on, 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 on something uh, going on there. And, um, Having my, my situation in mind, I have been, been following this thing that um, um, I'm kind of weighed, you know. Whatever I say um, is looked upon or things being suspicious. If you, if you, have, a, if you have a seminar or, for, for example, a conference on freedom of speech, um, that is suspect. Because why should someone bring up a conference on freedom of speech in Sweden? There must be a hidden agenda behind that. They actually want to say something, we, 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 we know what they want to say. That's why. They are hiding behind the freedom of speech, which you uh, over and over again uh, will have the problem. And uh, as an artist you have to meet these things that uh, even if you have something to say, it's not necessary to say it. And, uh, and so forth. Uh, of course, this gives us um, work to do as artists. And um, the thing is, of course, that which you, it's, it's uh, impossible to avoid is the, the latest case that has occurred here when a, um, a Swedish artist uh, who was um, acting against political correctness uh, say it in quite a rude and uh, rather sometimes a tasteless matter, but that's the uh, rules for this kind of art that uh, this artist was dealing with um, as a street artist. And um, um, yeah, he made, he made the wrong things um, and uh, actually challenged um, things that then was defined as hate speech. And he was accused of racism and uh, being a Nazi. That is, uh, then, then I mean, the, his case was brought into Denmark, where he actually got a lot of support. Um, but this this case actually gives also a principal matter, which I was thinking about. Uh, consider that you are an artist, and you look upon society today and say, what's going on here? Well, I mean, now we are back in Sweden. What are the Swedes very much concerned about? If you open the newspapers in Sweden, what will you read about? Latest news about racism. What's going on uh, in the field today? Is there some, um, some title of a music piece or a uh, title of an artwork or a text in, a, in an old book that maybe has been offending someone? And uh, this thing probably has to be removed, or we should have a discussion about it. There's all these things going on all the time. And um, one has to understand that this is good business also in Sweden. I can understand all these people working in anti-racist because that you make a career there. And you have a lot of people. And, and uh, the, the, of course, this represents uh, how do they look. 
Um, well, we have the expression res uh, racified. They look racified. That's a neutral way of expressing that they are not white. They are ra racified. And um, yeah, they have a career to think about. And when you have a career to think about, you have to deliver. Every day, almost every day. If you have nothing to deliver, it seems that racism doesn't exist. So you have to all the time push and push and bring something forward. And um, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's really good entertainment. Because once you bring it out in the newspaper, it starts going around, you know, on Facebook and Twitter and, and everything grows around. And um, you have the, yeah, the good guys and the bad guys are, are battling over this thing uh, and, and, and so forth. And so we have this every day. Uh, consider now that this situation could interest an artist and say, uh, um, if I want to make a satire of uh, anti-racism, is that possible? without being a racist yourself. Because I, I think about that, whatever you do, I mean, uh, um, uh, if you're trying to say, make a satire of this, you will, you will make a racist thing. And you will uh, actually attack people uh, who are then uh, racified and should be protected uh, from, uh, from attacks and from criticism. And then we have also the turning point here that we have a, a lot of people, let's say newcomers or what we shall call them, who has, is very well established in Sweden and um, men and women of power. But they are very hard to criticize because if you criticize them, you actually run into some sort of hate speech. Um, but I think we have to, uh, to deal with these questions and, and um, we have also to um, export some of the open mind we find here in Denmark where things can be actually still discussed. And uh, as an artist, of course, I, I'm always optimistic and uh, I'm uh, living with my bodyguards and I'm keeping on um, uh, my work and my uh, critique has not uh, been changed. Uh, um, Whatever happens, I just keep my own line. And um, I also think it's important to say that artists must be very clear that they only represent themselves. But from that point of view, they should have their freedom. And this freedom should be respected as being not a straightforward thing, but a complicated matter that you can discuss and suggest several interpretations but not just condemn with a single-minded look. Thank you. Thank you, Lars. And now we have time for questions. Um, anybody wants to ask Lars Vick something? If you have the chance now. Yes. I would like to know how on the Sweden, the Swedish people, has gone mad in just ten years. We consider Swedish, the Swedish people to be rather crazy. But how come you have an answer? <laughs> In English, please. <laughs> the power of Scandinavia. The big brother, and then they have the small brother, so look at the big brothers, and uh, we will give you the lead. We follow us. And I mean, actually, you have to confess that Sweden has uh, had many ideas which we have been uh, able to um, work out on, and it's been, been good stuff. Um, but still, I mean, Sweden wants to be very correct. And now we have a new idea about globalization and multicultural, and who is in the lead? Sweden. And uh, there you have fanatism. I mean, we must have something to believe in. And uh, Sweden has no Greek religion. I mean, what you do. there is not a social democracy anymore to believe in. The future looks not too good, but we have the global world, and we welcome it. 
And it's been hoped that uh, neighbors here in Scandinavia will be better because uh, they, you are funding very bad here. Denmark is uh, announced as a fascistic country, close to going Nazi. The same thing with Norway. But look at what you have done and follow it, uh, these steps, and everything will be fantastic. <laughs> Well, Question before the coffee break. Well, last thing, uh, I, we have met sometimes before, um, and um, but I think I never said that to you before. That uh, what you did with that dog in 2007 that was amazing because you know there was a big movement in Sweden at that time. They were making roundabout dogs all over the place in plastic and trees and things like that. And when you made your dog, which we know I never saw, then suddenly this movement that functioned, there was no more uh, roundabout dogs. So uh, I can give you that as a marketing thing. If you want to get rid of something, you do something which really uh, pisses off uh, everybody and then it will go down. Um, that's the only thing I want to say. Thank you for coming and nice to see you again. Yes. Could you come and last? Do you want to say something? No. Well, thank you. 